Hey, what's up everybody? Abbas here from Golden Motor. If you are electrifying your bike and you have the question, which mid-drive DIY motor is the best for me? In this video, I'm gonna cover the pros and cons, compare and contrast, everything you need to know about these DIY mid-drive motors. So the question by far that we get most is, which mid-drive motor should I put on my bike? And so the answer to that question is, is there's a lot of factors that you have to take into consideration. Like, what's your budget? What bike you're putting it on? Um, how much power are you looking for? How, what's your riding style? And there's many other factors. What's the geometry of your bike? So there's a lot of different factors that go into it. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna break it down by category. Um, as the video is going on, I'll, pay, I'll make a chart so you can kind of refer to that. By the end of this video, you'll have a very good idea which motor is best for you. So today our discussion will be focused on these seven mid-drive motors right now, DIY mid-drive motors. Um, obviously there are other DIY mid-drive motors on the market, but these are, as of February 2025, these are the most popular on the market right now. So we're gonna be focusing on the CYC Photon, the CYC X1 Pro, the CYC Stealth, the Bafang BBSO2, the Bafang BBS HD, the 27 DMO2, and the 27 DMO1. So the first thing we wanna tackle is uh, what battery can you pair these with? So all of these batteries can be paired from 36, uh, with a 36 volt battery, with a 48 volt battery, and a 52 volt battery. The only different ones that are the X1 Pro and the 27 DMO1. The DMO1 you can pair with also with a 60 volt battery, and the X1 Pro you can pair with a 72 volt battery. So obviously right now we're talking stock. So you can definitely use a BBS HD, even a 27 DMO1 with a 72 volt battery, but you have to do aftermarket modding on the controller and use a different controller. So that's definitely possible. But right now for this video, we're gonna be talking about everything stock. Next thing we wanna talk about is rated wattage and power levels. So on your screen, I'm not going to go through every single Newton meters of torque on each motor. So on the screen, I'm going to put down the Newton meters of torque for each motor and the rated wattage for each motor. One thing that we get, um, the customers are confused that uh, what is the range on these motors? So the range on your motor will depend on the amp hours of your battery. That has nothing to do with the motor that you get. And even like um, the rated wattage, for example, you have a BBSO2 and it's rated at 500 watts. But if you pair it with a 52 volt battery that can give out about 30 amps, this controller can handle 25 amps. So if you have a 52 volt battery, which is fully charged 58.8 times at 25. So that's that you can get way more than the, the peak power is way more than the rated 500 watts on here. So again, like these are rated watts, but peak, it depends on what battery you're using, how much amps is that battery putting out. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the pedal assist. So all uh, seven of these motors have pedal assist. The Bafangs have cadence sensing and the CYC and the two sevens have torque sensing. So the difference between cadence and torque sensing, basically in cadence sensing, your, the sensor is detecting movement. So if, any, if it detects any movement, it will give you the level of uh, assist that you have set on your display. So for example, if you pedal just really lightly in a cadence sensing, it will give you the same assist um, as a full, and if you're pedaling really fast, it will give you the same assist level. In torque sensing, it detects the amount of torque that you're putting on the pedal. So if you're pedaling lightly, it will give you less assist. And if it's detecting that you're pedaling uh, faster and harder, it will give you more assist. So in that sense, the torque sensing is more natural feeling. It feels like you have a bionic leg. A lot of people prefer the torque sensing technology over cadence sensing. But the Bafang's most displays, actually all the displays in Bafang, you can set the cadence level to all the way to nine. So you have nine increments of power levels. So you can, you can dial it down to your particular level that you need. But again, a lot of people consider the torque sensing more superior technology. 
the torque sensing in the CYC is definitely much more smoother than the 27. When I talk about like the prices, you'll see why. 27 is more of a budget entry level uh, motor. The CYC is a more premium motor and the torque sensing on it shows. On the screen right now, I'm also gonna put uh, a very important question is the weight level of all the motors. So um, as you can see, just by the motor size, the, the CYC Photon is definitely the lightest motor on the market right now, yeah. And then if you compare the power level and the weight ratio of the CYC Photon, it definitely takes the cake. So the next section we're gonna talk about is ease of installation, which bottom bracket sizes can you use the motors for, um, aftermarket parts, and reliability. So as far as ease of installation, all of these have very similar procedures. There's so much literature and videos out there to install it. The hardest or the late limiting step on most bikes is to remove the bottom bracket, which is the same in all of these. But I wouldn't give one of the motors like a nod of like ease of installation. So there are DIY motors, it is a little bit involved, not hard, as long as you're mechanically uh, inclined and you have the proper tools, the installation procedure is about the same. As far as bottom bracket uh, fitment, so all of these motors can work with 68 to 83 millimeter bottom brackets, 100 and 120, and even press fit. All these work because they're special fittings which are readily available from Lecky and other parts that are available that you can put it with uh, press fit bottom brackets also. Uh, one thing to note is that a lot of people prefer a motor that they can switch between their 68 millimeter bottom bracket bike to 120. 27, the DMO1, DMO2, and the Bafang, you cannot change the bottom bracket size. You have to get a full motor to put on the other bike. You cannot like interchange between one bike to another. The good thing about the BBSO2 and the CYC is that BBSO2 has a modification kit which you can change from 68 to 100 to 120. And these ones you can go from 68 to BB92 to 100 to 120 and then 120 back to a 68 because the axle on these three is not like fixed in there. So you basically change the bottom bracket cup, the axle and some spacers. And so in that sense, the CYC is very versatile if you want to use it on multiple bikes. So as far as aftermarket parts goes, uh, Bafang definitely has the most aftermarket options. Because the reason is it's been on the market for such a long time. So Lecky and other players have made a lot of aftermarket mods to this. To CYC's defense, their product is already so premium. Like for example, like for most BBSHD kits, a lot of people upgrade the chainring to a Lecky because of the stock chainring is just doesn't cut it for most people. But for CYC, their chainring is already very upgraded, so you do not need a chainring mod to it. So when I'm putting in price, I will actually put in the Lecky and then the Bafang, so it gives you a little bit more fair comparison. The parts on CYC are actually so premium that there are not too many aftermarket options right now, but Lecky, from what I hear, they are coming out with some upgrades. As far as reliability, all these have a warranty process, 2.7 and Bafang has a one-year war warranty. CYC has a two-year warranty in all its parts and motors. And the internal parts for Bafang and CYC are very readily available. Uh, since 2.7 is newer on the market, the parts are getting better. But you know, it's so far, so far, so good on far uh, reliability wise. And finally, I'm gonna be talking about the display options, the customization, and the price point. So as far as display options, uh, Bafang definitely has the most options. Uh, they probably have like seven, eight, nine. I lost count. Like they have a lot of display options with Bafang. They have the Egg Rider with the Bafang. CYC has two display options and. 2.7 has three display options and customization. So they're all UART communication protocol right now. So customization is pretty good on all of them. As far as the app for CYC is definitely the most advanced because it's so user friendly and there's a lot of custom changes that you can make on the app on the go. 
So both of their displays are Bluetooth capable and you can make a lot of changes on the go. As far as Bafang, they are gonna be going to the Canvas protocol, which will make the customization a little bit harder to do. But the display options, I still am hearing that the Canvas will have, you know, seven or eight display options but the customization will be a little bit limited on the buffet but the the motor and the internal parts and most of the things on the buffet will remain uh, the same so we talked about customization okay so last thing and for a lot of people is the price point so i'm going to put it i'm going to put the retail on the screen right now so you can look at the price point of these so again like you know when you're making your decision there's a lot of factors that go into it am i, am I using this for my mountain biking do i need torque sensing or cadence sensing am i going to be pulling a lot of load am i doing a lot of pedal assist versus throttle only um, is this my first install do i need to pay for you know premium products there's a lot of factors that go into this, but hopefully uh, this video helped you ease your decision when you're choosing your DIY mid-drive. But if you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call or comment below and we'll get back to you. But as far as this video, I think we are done.